a soap. soap videos and so man i hope you kept up on using your soap uh man i really enjoyed today so let's dive right on in remember scripture observation application and prayer uh we've been doing this through the whole year lots of people have been get on the web page the my soaps are posted on the web page my written soaps and so you know get on there take a look at it read it it's some good stuff uh, so today I entitled our readings today because we read Micah 5 through 7 in Hebrews chapter 7. And I, 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 here's what I entitled it. Jesus, the forever high priest. Jesus, the forever high priest. So it's Hebrews chapter 7 and uh, beginning at verse 20 through 25. Look what it says. This makes Jesus the guarantee or the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing uh, in office. So you gotta remember, it was an office, it was a call. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. That was my passage. What a powerful verse, Hebrews 4. Remember, Hebrews chapter 4, we read it a few days ago. We have immediate access to God. And then uh, the writer of Hebrews has taken us through this whole harmonizing the Old Testament theology and the, and the tabernacle and the temple and all of the practices and how Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all of that. And here in chapter 7 now, he's really getting down to the high priest. So here's my observation. Is it the Old Testament tabernacle, the headdresses, long embroidered robes, some old guy tying a rope around his leg just in case he doesn't make it out of the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement? To be honest, those are the first things I think of, and I don't think in terms of the present day, when I hear the words high priest, all those things foreshadow. I think in terms of the ancient of days doing part of the present day reality in Christ of approaching, listen to this, God's throne of grace anytime we want. That was Hebrews chapter 4. Born into an era by grace through faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, the sum total of the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And the many privileges therein is commonplace for us to call upon God for ourselves without seeking the aid of a priest. The Israelites, however, relied on the mediation of priests, and in particular, the high priest, to present the necessary atonement for their sins in order to be accepted before God. Yet the truth is, we still come to God in the same way through the mediation of not just any high priest, but Christ Jesus, our high priest. You see, the ministry of the high priest is not just an ancient tradition, but presently it is an inhabited position. I want you to think about that. There is a present high priest that, that holds that office. It's still true, just as it was in the days of the law and the tabernacle, that we as sinful humanity need representation before a holy God. This is something the recipients of the book of Hebrews would have understood well. The argument in Hebrews is that it is a necessary position, but the position that Jesus now holds is our current, current holder, and who will hold it forever, is superior to any of the other high priests that was there. Um, a lady that I follow, her name is Stacy Salisbury, she says, when speaking of Jesus as our high priest, she, it's declared this way. We still, to this day, can't come to God on our own terms. To think uh, God will and does accept us in our sinful state is a flirt with a apostasy to the Christian faith. Just like the recipients of the book of Hebrews, we need to take note of the warning not to fall away from the truths we've been taught. If you remember, that's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. The danger for us is to become calloused, and as we become calloused, we take for granted 
the wonderful grace that's been given to us by our high priest. You see, that high priest is our mediator. And perhaps more importantly, we can become desensitized on how we actually get to present our request before a holy God day in and day out. Think about that. Through the ministry of Christ alone. Isn't that great? It's not that God has done away with the old system, but that he's fulfilled it. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew? I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. And that word to fulfill is a cognate of the word pluros, which means to extend it. Where does he extend it? He extends it into our heart. It's not the outside of the cup. It's what's on the inside. Pretty amazing stuff. And so with this, we are copies of the real thing in heaven. In other words, Jesus has placed us here, and our ultimate goal is heaven. Now, here's the application. In verse 22 makes the application which is of this passage, which is a powerful application. This makes Jesus, and here's the phrase. It means so much. It crescendos with this phrase. Jesus is the better surety and guarantee. The word that is used here is the same word that's used of a papyrus scroll or a legal promissory note of documents, meaning a guarantor, a guarantor of a loan, a guarantor of some type, something that's valuable, or one who stands in security. Jesus himself is our security that there will be uh, no annulment uh, this is the ultimate consummation of the better co uh, covenant. And in verse 24, Jesus is the forever high priest. He's not going anywhere. There's no need to renegotiate the contract with him being our high priest. Here's what really speaks to me. He will always allow us to draw close to him because he is always interceding for us. And this word is a present active infinitive. In the Greek, it's a present action. That's active, but the infinitive verb means ongoing action. In other words, he will continuously never cease and be in our mediator, interceding on our behalf forever. That's his role. The Old Testament priest died and slept, but our high priest is always contending for me and will never stop being present and allowing me to draw close to him. Can I get an amen? So here's my prayer today. Oh, Jesus, I submit myself to you and desire to never be distracted in such a way that I forget that you are my high priest and that you are constantly making intercession for me. I desire to draw close to you and never allow myself to be separated from you because of me being stubborn. I sit at your feet and desire to be present with you. May you be the focus of my attention. Thank you for being my high priest in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, this is good stuff. I hope you enjoy this video. Write your comments down below. I have taken my journal notes for my soap, and it is in the section there that's the description. You can read it and follow along with my uh, footnotes and everything else. Uh, I'll have another one tomorrow. God bless you. I love you. Let's continue to use our soap. And, uh, and remember, remember this. He's the only one, he's the only mediator, and man, he's the one that intercedes for each and every one of us. God bless you.